Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas McGinn, the Executive Vice President for the Physician Enterprise here at Common Spirit Health. Today is Monday, August 1st, and welcome to the five-minute check-in. As always, we're going to talk about what's happening with COVID around the United States and here at Common Spirit Health. We're going to talk about the fall as we try to get ready for kids going back to school in the influenza season. Then we're going to mention an Alzheimer's article that was published and causing a bit of a controversy around the research in that space. And last, we're going to have a guest talk to us about a new article that looks at valve replacement surgery. So let's get started. Cases across the United States and hospitalizations are up. We see a 2% increase peaking over 6,000 across the United States. The weekly rate of hospitalizations for all age groups have increased since April. The rates for children aged six months and younger who are not eligible for vaccination are the highest among the pediatric groups. On a better note, mortality rates are down for COVID across the United States. Now, as you can see from this graphic, we have a lot of work to do around boosters. So you can see here for the five to 11 year old group, only 3% have received their first booster. For the 12 to 17 year olds, only 17%. And surprisingly, for the 18 to 49-year-old group, only 27% have received their first booster. For the older group, what's really challenging is that in that group, 50 to 64, only 10% have received that important second booster. And those over the age of 65, you can see here, only 25% have received that second booster. So we have a lot of work in front of us as we approach the fall. So as we look at that lack of boosters that have been given out, there are a few questions that are right in front of us, some big challenges. Well, first of all, for patients who have been vaccinated but no booster received, do we ask them to wait to get the Omicron-specific booster or do we tell them to get that booster right in front of them? And that's a conversation that's ongoing. Second, we need to make sure we're ready to give the flu shot and we need to get our patients in for the flu shot. And third, those that have never been vaccinated for COVID, we need to figure out how to get them into the office to vaccinate them for COVID and for flu, because we do not want to have the twindemic that people have been talking about with the mix of flu and COVID as we approach the fall. And before we move on to our guest, just a mention of a controversy that you'll be seeing in the news and in the literature regarding tampering with data. So the context for this around Alzheimer's disease has been a long-standing debate. Are the plaques that we see on the MRIs and the CT scans, these beta amyloid plaques, are they just correlated with Alzheimer's disease or do they cause Alzheimer's disease? And the research in question and being challenged as potentially fabricated is old research and some photographs that were saying that the plaques cause Alzheimer's disease. Now, this is really important because if we believe the plaques cause Alzheimer's disease, then treating those plaques and all of the research that takes place is really important. But if the plaques do not cause Alzheimer's disease, then much of that research may be misplaced. So we're going to take a deep dive on this on an upcoming five-minute check-in. Now onto an interesting discussion related to a new publication that just came out looking at transcatheter aortic valve implantation versus open surgery for aortic valve replacement. And to have that conversation with us today is Dr. Waleed Kayani, who is an interventional cardiologist and assistant professor at the Baylor College of Medicine. Dr. Kayani, thank you for joining us today to have this conversation. Thank you for having me, Dr. McGinn. So tell me about this trial, a uh, large trial coming out of England. What was the methodology? What were the results? And we'll get to a little bit about the implications for clinical practice. So the UK TABI trial was an investigator-initiated pragmatic clinical trial. It looked at the non-inferiority of transcatheter aortic valve replacement in comparison to surgical aortic valve replacement with the primary outcome of mortality at 12 months. And what did it demonstrate? What was the final outcome of this, this beautifully done, randomized, pragmatic trial that really reflects day-to-day -day practice? It's very well put together, Dr. McGinn, how their enrollment criteria was very lax in terms of all centers in the UK. Very, very little exclusion criteria. And what it showed was they're choosing a non-inferiority margin of 5%. Mm -hmm. Taver had a mortality of 4.6% at 12 months compared to 6.6% in the surgical uh, aortic valve replacement group that fell well within 
the non-inferiority margin, and once again, built up on our existing data set to show that TABR in a more real world setting is also non-inferior to surgical aortic valve replacement. Right, so this is consistent with other studies. Now, there was a couple of little signals here. Let's talk a little bit about the need for pacemaker because I think that's where some of the details come out and are important. That's very important. As you said, there were other secondary endpoints, about 30 of them that they looked at as well, whereby the length of hospitalization, then the amount of major bleeding complications was significantly lower in the pacemaker, in the TAVA group. The pacemaker rate was about twice that of surgical right. aortic valve replacement in the TAVA group. And this becomes very important, especially as we extrapolate and offer TAVA treatment to more intermediate and lower risk populations where the lifeline, uh, life uh, style limiting aspects of uh, surgical uh, of, uh, pacemaker become important as well. So this is an exciting study. I think it's consistent with other prior studies, but give me the bottom line for your clinical practice and for our clinical practice. What does this mean? Excellent question. I think overall now the data is very clear that patients older than 80 years of age, as the guidelines suggest also, is TAVR is the frontline treatment choice. Patients less than 65 years of age, given the long-term data on the valve durability is lacking, surgical right. aortic valve replacement is the treatment of choice. It's that subgroup between 65 to 80 years of age where we need a heart team approach, shared decision-making with the patient to make the best decision as it suits the patient's lifestyles based on their comorbidities. Excellent summary. Thank you for joining us. I look forward to having a more in-depth discussion with you because there's a lot more we can talk about, but it's really exciting. See you in two weeks at the Grand Rounds. Thanks for joining us. So thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in two weeks at the next 5-Minute Check-In.